Hi there, Aaron from Nebra here, and I'm here with my colleague John. We're just going to show you the AnyBeam projector today, how to set it up and how to connect it up to a device. So to start with, on the table here, you can see a variety of cables and other devices. Firstly, we have an HDMI to USB-C cable. Next is a micro USB cable, that's a power cable for the projector. This is a 3.5mm audio cable, which we'll use with the speaker to show a wired audio connection. Then we have a power bank, which will be used with the cable to power the projector. A speaker, this is both Bluetooth and wired. And then finally, on this tripod, we have the AnyBeam projector. So, let's get started. I'm going to ask John to borrow his phone. Um, and we will first plug in the HDMI to USB-C cable. So I'll plug in the HDMI. John can then plug that into his phone there. That's now set up. Next, we'll take the micro USB cable, plug the USB size into the power bank, turn it on, and then we'll plug the power into the back of the projector there. You can see the lights come on. The phone we're using for this demo is just a Samsung Galaxy S8, which has a USB-C connection. However, this projector will work with a variety of devices. Anything that can output HDMI, that includes phones with a lightning connector, some phones with a micro USB connector, and most phones with a USB-C connector. It will also work with devices such as Chromecast, Amazon Fire TV stick and a variety of other wireless display connectors as well. So I'm just going to ask John now to go and turn off the light and then we'll move forward. So as you can see the screen is now showing on this projector screen background. It's not quite set up perfectly as you can see with there being a bit of a uh, side angle on the display and also you can see that it's a bit of a parallelogram so the sides aren't completely straight. That's called Keystone and we'll correct that from the menu. So you can see here on the left hand side there is a button. This is a multi-directional button so it can go up, down and you can push it in as well. On the pushing in, you can do a short press or a long hold, which has different functionality. To get into the menu system, you do a long press on the side button. So I'll do that now. Hold it down for about three seconds. And as you can see, it goes into the menu system. You can see the top setting here is Keystone. That's the one we're gonna use. So you do a short press and then you get into the menu system. And you've now got up and down buttons, a save button and a return to the previous menu button. So I'll just show you the difference it makes when you change the keystone. So we're already at the highest setting. You can see as I change it, it changes the parallelogram nature of the image. So we actually need to go back up as you can see. So we lift that up and go a bit higher than we were before and that now looks a bit about straight. Does that look good to you, John? Yep. Okay, then we go down to save, click save, and then to get out of the menu, you do a long press. And I'm gonna run through a few of the other settings available to us here. We've been through the keystone already, so I'm gonna go through the flip now. There's four different settings for flip. As you can see, some of them are upside down and other ones mirrored. The reason that this is useful is if, for example, you're mounting it upside down, such as on a ceiling mount, you can then have the picture still the correct way around. The ones that are mirrored are for use where the projection is coming from behind the projector screen rather than in front. You can then save whatever setting you have by scrolling down to the save and clicking the save. 
The next setting available to us is brightness. Pretty obvious one this. As it says, it just changes the brightness of the display. In typical scenarios, you probably want the brightness to be highest, but it's just there as an option. Again, you can save that and you are taken back to the menu system. The next one down is sharpness. As you can see, this changes the level of sharpness of the text. And really this setting depends on the exact usage scenario that you have in mind. Things such as the ambient light levels and the distance from the projector screen really affect this. As you can see, it's now much sharper than when I just altered it. And again, you can save the setting with the save button. Next on the list, we have green alignment. Now this is a sort of vertical and horizontal alignment. The reason we've got a green and a blue alignment is because the way this system works is that it has a green, red, and a blue laser inside the projector. And if these aren't aligned properly, then you can get a bit out of focus. You've got up, down, and left and right arrows, which can be adjusted just as the previous menus. And then once it's ready, you can click save. The blue alignment is exactly the same. And this just allows you to get the image much sharper. The penultimate setting we have here is called language. Again, pretty obvious. You can change the language. And last but not least, we have the factory reset. As it says, this just allows you to reset back to the factory settings. So now we'll hit play on the video, give you a short demo, and also show you how the distance away from the screen affects the size of the image. We'll do this with the audio off, because otherwise you won't be able to hear my voice. So I'll hit play. As you can see, it's now playing up on the screen. I'll just grab the power bank so we can move and the phone. And I'll move a little bit further forward. As you can see, as we get closer, the image gets smaller. And then as I move back towards the sofa, the image starts to get much larger. So we'll place that down here in this footstool. And as you can see, the image is now pretty well filling the screen there. The second way to get audio out of your setup is using the 3.5mm audio jack on the AnyBeam itself. You can see this here next to the HDMI connector and you can just plug in a 3.5mm cable like that and that takes the sound over the HDMI, outputs it over the 3.5mm and then you can plug that into any speaker or you can even plug headphones in if that's easier and you're on the move.